A craniofacial condition is anything that uh, could make a child look different than their peers. Craniosynostosis is by far the number one. And then after that, it would be things like Golden Har syndrome, Treacher Collins syndrome, hemifacial microsomia, microtia, which is where one ear doesn't form fully. These are a lot of the other things that we tend to see in our craniofacial clinic. A baby's skull comes in different bony plates, so that's why a baby has a soft spot. It's on the top of the head, and that's actually where the different bony plates of the skull come together. So sometimes when the areas where the bones are coming together, which are called sutures, or they're like seams, the sutures can be fused in an abnormal way or prematurely fused. These sutures where the bones come together are supposed to fuse at different points in life after birth. Uh, when they're fused too early and abnormally, the growing brain is pushing the rest of the skull into an abnormal shape. The idea of having a multidisciplinary clinic is that it takes much more than one person to take care of that child and that family. And when they're coming to this center, their needs are very specialized and it requires a great deal of coordination between different teams in order to meet those needs. I work very closely with the plastic surgery team as well as other members of the team such as our speech pathologists, our nutritionists, our developmental pediatricians, and our orthodontists. Um, so we've really um, developed a, a community that focuses on our patients and our families. Every child's treatment is slightly different based on what their underlying diagnosis is and what age that we see them. So for instance, um, children who have sagittal synostosis, which is where the seam down the middle fuses and the head grows much more this way than it does this way. If we see them in the first three months of life, we can offer what we would call a minimally invasive or endoscopic approach that's paired with a helmet that's worn after surgery to help reshape the skull. Those children, if we don't see them until they're older, six months or a year, require a different type of surgery in order to correct that. So most craniosynostosis surgeries are elective, which means you have time to plan for the surgery, so you want the best team involved. Having a place with a high volume is important because you know that uh, the team is always working together. Um, and that they're able to uh, predict and, and reproduce their, their results and outcomes. We use virtual surgical planning, uh, which is a computer-aided design. So for more complex surgeries where we have to, to plan very, very uh, precise um, cuts on the bone, we're able to practice that surgery before the surgery. Um, also, we use some 3D printing so that we have models of patients' skulls and facial bones so that we can plan for uh, the ways to do the surgery that will achieve the best outcomes. We track their progress with what we call our 3D MD or our 3D photography system. And then another area of current research is the neurodevelopmental outcomes for our children. And so they're seen before surgery and after surgery by our neurodevelopmental psychologist in clinic to address any issues that may come up as they get older. And believe it or not, our children recover within a few days and go home on just Tylenol. So if they have an endoscopic procedure, typically they're going home the next day and getting fitted for their helmet the following week. For children who have a slightly larger surgery, they may be here for three to five days. Um, and then there's no helmet needed afterwards. They're going back to daycare, back to their normal activities in about a week. As an anxious, worrying mother myself, I felt that it was important to give them that space to talk about it with somebody else. And I think that that's a very important role that we play here, is putting them in contact with each other. We have a lot of families that come to see us for a second or a third opinion. Um, and I think it's really important to do your research and to feel comfortable in the center that you're 
going to have your child's care done. And so I encourage all of those families to stay for our support group, to meet the other families, and to just get more information whatever way they feel comfortable. It's open to everybody. I think that we are focused on the patient and the family from beginning to end, and end maybe adulthood. I mean, we're here forever. We want to make sure that every step of the way that they're getting everything that they need. Texas Children's is an amazing place. You just have to come see it once and realize that the entire institution and, and multiple buildings, it's full of people who are focused on taking care of children. And I, I'm lucky to work with very amazing people every day. Um, not just my surgical colleagues, but uh, in terms of our nursing staff, coordinators, uh, everybody here is for the children. We watch these children grow up and we want to make sure that they have the best healing and the best development and the best outcomes possible in every aspect.